So hello and welcome to this uh, exclusive roundtable discussion organized by Bio Technologies and Google Cloud in association with ETCIO. My name is Mukbil Amar. I'm the executive editor at ETCIO and the host for this session. Uh, first of all, I wish and hope that all of you are safe and secure. Now coming to the topic for today's discussion, it is focused on powering enterprise agility with SAP on cloud. Now. Digital has become a necessity for businesses, and we all understand this, and they have to do this in order to survive and sustain in the market. In fact, after the pandemic is struck, it has become crucial for businesses to transform their legacy systems, particularly traditional businesses, into cloud in order to stay ahead of the curve and really stay competitive. Now with advanced cloud-based solutions, businesses can easily migrate their legacy systems to cloud while becoming more agile, scalable, and sustainable. These are all advantages that accrue from uh, a shift to the cloud. Now, in this virtual meet, leading industry veterans will deep dive into how organizations can unlock business enablers expected from SAP data and cloud investments, while at the same time, becoming more innovative, scalable, agile, as well as cost effective in uh, quite a few instances. So I feel that, you know, keeping in mind what has happened over the last two years, in fact, more than two years, there couldn't have been a better time to discuss all this because, you know, so much of rapid digitalization is taking place in today's age that I think this is the apt time to do that. And also for one more reason is that we have a lineup of extremely knowledgeable and insightful speakers in our midst. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our guest speakers for today. Uh, VT Nand Kumar Nair, CEO and co-founder Supreme Petrochemicals Limited. Shakaraji Thakur, additional general manager IT Gujarat, Narmada Valley Fertilizers and Chemicals. Madan Gupta, chief operating officer, Jay Prakash Power Ventures Limited. Umesh Khandelwal, CIO, GMIT, Daikin, Air Conditioning, India Private Limited. Tejas Shah, Chief Technology Officer, Kalpatru. M. Prabhakar Rao, Associate VP IT and IS, Natco Pharma Limited. Sridham Arthanari, CIO, Cosmo Films. Ankit Sinha, Co-Founder and CTO, Tagbin. Anil Jain, GMIT Head, SSIPL Retail Limited. Harshad Bardolia, Deputy GM Information Technology, Colortex India Limited, Sri Murugan Veluswamy, SAP on GCP Sales Head, Google Cloud India, and last but not the least, Abdul Munim, co founder and director, Rio Technologies, who is also a well known cloud evangelist. Uh, before we uh, begin with a systematic round of discussions, uh, I would also want to make a few housekeeping announcements. Kindly keep your audio and video on during the duration of the discussion. Also, for the technology leaders, I would request you to keep your mark, uh, keep your remarks generic uh, without taking any specific vendor names. We would really appreciate that. Now, uh, I would really want to go first to the technology leaders who are here. And for that, I would want to uh, go first to Tejas uh, on his views, his opening remarks on this uh, roundtable discussion. So good evening, everybody. So I'll just say this uh, earlier, like if you plan to have something SAP or some financial, any portal on the cloud, there were lots of constraints from the CFO and finance team. But good, this pandemic came, which uh, taught all of us that how we can access all critical applications from home and definitely there are whatever security is required that you have to work out and you can go ahead so this has helped uh, many organizations and how smoothly you can work with all your critical day and operations and you can also serve your customers and enhance your business so this two years has definitely has given us a good lesson and how we can go ahead more on a technology adoption got it now staying on with you Tejas for the time being uh, in your view, 
how important is cloud adoption you know for the digital transformation journey of enterprises today so cloud is definitely very much required for business to advance faster because in current scenarios everybody want a very instant information everybody want information at a glance and uh, cloud is the where where you you it's available 24 by 7 with the uh, fantastic speed and uh, you can serve your uh, team as well as your customers and it helps you to announce your business also so i think this is the moment where to go ahead correct uh, shriram your views on this yeah so uh, my view is that it's not just uh, an important piece but it has become core to how businesses succeed as well because since the pandemic we had uh, successful uh, business enterprise ones with more digital adoption and cloud has become core to digital adoption in itself right so the amount of agility and newer processes that you can enable by moving to the cloud uh, far outweighs whatever costs and uh, uh, you know uh, other uh, costs that are uh, that are uh, basically making it a stopper to move to cloud right? so um, that's how uh, we we view the cloud option as well right 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 uh, mr prabhakar your views on this yeah so good afternoon good afternoon everyone good afternoon good evening to everyone uh i think uh, the cloud has become kind of uh, an imminent uh, part of our lives now okay uh, the very fact that you know all our photos are also going and storing on the cloud as far as personal thing is concerned it starts from our handphone itself a lot of things go on the cloud i think we have come to a stage where we feel that you know the data is best stored on the cloud with all the necessary security and uh, you know the necessary ingredients rather than keeping it in house okay uh, there are challenges in terms of you know some of the applications and all that that can go on the cloud but uh, you know by and large i think you know people have come to understand that uh, the cloud is a better bet rather than you know kind of doing it uh, in house Uh, the that so that's the first thing and uh, so i think uh, i don't think we're at the question of uh, uh, i don't think so we are in the first stages of adoption rather i think you know we are already in the next orbit as far as the adoption is concerned people have already started it the scalability or the you know kind of volume of adoption that is the next point that we are talking of okay so i i don't think so we are having those baby steps on the cloud now we are we are into the next phase now the second thing that uh, i think that becomes very uh, pertinent is that uh, if you want to do something today like you know uh, uh, i i remember the book you know business at the speed of thought if you want to relate it today i think uh, it makes sense to look at you know the cloud option if you want to do something and you know the best is to kind of uh, take some space in the cloud and get started with an app or whatever so uh, basically business at the speed of thought can be facilitated with the cloud adoption uh, instead of you know kind of provisioning everything in house and doing it that's uh, that's one thing on a lighter side on a lighter side uh, i would say that if you want the data to follow you wherever you go you want the data to follow then i think the cloud is a better option that's what i think right um, so uh, you know mr rao says that uh, cloud has kind of become the default today as far as the technology landscape is concerned and he also touched a little bit on the challenges bit that enterprises face uh, mr rao would you like to uh, you know uh, elaborate a little more on the challenges that enterprises face today as they try to leverage cloud yeah so not every candidate can every candidate application can go to the cloud because there are compliances there are you know uh, there are constraints which uh, limit okay so let's say now i have a uh, i have a weighing scale which has to be connected to the device okay so there i mean there are interface related issues that it's not the technological thing it's more of the you know kind of a local thing that is required so it doesn't it doesn't make sense to put all those kind of applications or scientific applications on the cloud unless 
they are memory hungry or they are resource hungry okay otherwise i think they they are, i mean some of the candidates don't fit fit to that uh, thing and you know again you know you also have to look at the audience who are the user audience okay what is the user audience is it if all the 100 users are sitting at one place there is no point in putting it to the cloud and making them go around the cloud for that okay so i mean there are different parameters that you have to look at you know which makes the ideal candidate for the cloud there is a lot of mobility or the you know the security concerns or there are you know the documentation concerns these are all the things that you have to look at it from our industry point of view from a pharma industry point of view right right excellent inputs coming from you and uh, uh, i would like to add that we have uh, two more uh, panelists joining us uh, currently mr vamsi mohan kaneganti penna cement industries limited general manager it as well as himan pandit supreme petrochemicals limited head it uh, so vamsi we wanted to know your opinion as far as uh, you know the challenges that you know really uh that a fraud in say uh, something like cloud adoption for enterprises there is um, obviously you know change management issues within the infra teams uh, first of all um, good evening to all the gentlemen here mm-hmm. work as uh, general manager it and crm at uh, penna cements so besides the sales and marketing systems i also manage any new initiatives that happen at uh, penasement uh, coming to the question uh, mukbil uh, one of the biggest challenges in uh, enterprises like ours is you know people who are managing the infrastructure on site they're just happy with the way things are and uh, we don't see that much value if you are a manufacturing firm in india in uh, moving to the cloud it's always you know a multitude of factors you look at what are the advantages that you are going to get what is the cost are those advantages really applicable to us or not like do we have a sudden surge in uh, volume of transactions yeah not really sudden surge in the sense like 3x 10x 20x like diwali uh, we we are not affected uh, that way and uh, we don't have uh, that big of a footprint in terms of data where we have to move our system from here into something new like whatever is stated as an advantage maybe the advantage that we see is everything is going to be taken care on the cloud and uh, the availability will be better scalability will be good and maybe in the future when uh, the cost of labor in india becomes too high you know instead of the infrastructure team managing the hardware you know someone else is going to manage it on the cloud at a better rate currently for us it seems totally feasible at least uh, by 50% to run it on prem than cloud and challenges again you know with the management also in a perception is there if you put it on the cloud everyone will get to see it <laughs> and i mean this is not about penna also i hear from other uh, this is not at all about penna in general i'm just saying what i hear from other enterprise it managers also now uh, ceo of other companies think that uh, you know if uh, there's a case or something it's easier to scrub the data of your on prem servers then something on uh, the cloud these concerns are there right mr vamsi very interesting points he says that you know it's very difficult to scrub which is uh, anything which is on premise and that uh, you know moving on the cloud does have its uh, uh, advantages as far as uh, 
agility is concerned scalability is concerned mr thakur would you like to add on to how technology can really help enterprises be agile in today's day uh, in today's day and age okay before i start i uh, was uh, just tell is uh, recent just mr vamsi said that what challenge he has said that i agree to him uh, okay in our case uh, 100% infrastructure is on premise mm-hmm. okay uh, ours is a uh, government sector and 100% all the infrastructure last year only we tried with the cloud solution only on the sap's dr site we were maintaining the dr site on premise in our another location and just recently the dr functionality has been shifted to cloud i think it is i have left the organization last year and i am aware that uh, it has been it's an oracle platform the cloud provider is uh, almost over, oracle so only the dr portion we have shifted and the challenge is we foresee is uh, uploading or moving the data or applications to dr uh, to the cloud environment seems to be easy but at a later date if you want to shift to another provider for example we, if you want to change the vendor okay there are plenty of uh, cloud providers and if you, because of any reason if you want to migrate or relocate the uh, provider then the challenge could be a tough because data which is put there i think there are another uh, different kinds of packages to bring back the data and then giving it to other ones so that could be a challenge in case we want to change the provider that is uh, i want to see i can see that other things the uh, the easier options would be uh, if you are uh, taking the services of all licensing uh, products operating systems or servers storage everything then it would be easier because uh, most of the uh, cloud providers are offering the uh, you can say pay per use okay so that way if the uh, the usage is uh, minimum for example if the dr functionality there is no much uh, uh, resources requirement it's only a storage so that would become uh, easier and the cheaper option but if you want to operate the real time uh, uh, a transaction kind of thing on the cloud that we could face the challenges on the connectivity portion because our organization is uh, is not in the metro city or type it's a, a small town and of course we are uh, we have arranged the multiple sources of internet with sufficient bandwidth but there there also could be a challenge because lot of the, uh, the very first example is uh, preparation of the invoices on the sales and that if it is on the cloud environment and because of any reason it that has us uh, some uh, loss of link then the business can be affected so we have preferred to uh, use the production environment on premise and only the dr functionality we have shifted to the cloud this is what from our side this is right very very interesting and uh, something that a lot of enterprises do you know in maintaining this dichotomy between on premise and cloud i think shriram wanted to add uh, something to the discussion shriram yeah thank you um so what i wanted to add was that in many cases organizations want to just do a lift and shift and in some cases you also want to do a, a total transformation of business processes right but finally it it needs to be for uh, some business outcome uh so if you're just doing for the sake of cloud adoption a lift and shift and it's not really giving you any benefit that doesn't really mean anything right uh, and to in, in order to completely change your business process you have a your whole set of challenges in itself for that um so you really have to plan that out and effectively deliver to see the uh, you know scalability agility all those benefits that we're talking about and you have to live through those challenges so it's not just about you know doing a lift and shift and moving on right right uh, wonderful points coming from uh, shriram i would request uh, tejas to uh, 
really uh, you know take us through the challenges if he has faced any as far as cloud implementation is concerned and particularly you know with respect to critical applications like sap so challenge is definitely there is a so you move to the cloud and cloud your existing setup and the cloud setup is the latest setup so while migrating the data you face because you are coming from lower version to the higher version so directly it doesn't happen you have to create a bubble server at a isp level at a cloud uh, server and then from there you can do the migration so data migration definitely because you move want to move the historical data because now everybody wants to have a dashboard analytical reports and everything on the cloud and the senior management want to take a decision on that particular analytical reports so data migration and security these are the two which i have faced uh, the challenge otherwise definitely because everybody everything has an advantage and disadvantage and there was a lots of advantage like you can on a click you get your uh, reports or you can do your entries posting uh, on the sap and everything secondly it's available 24 by 7 there are lots of invoice generation reports payment whatever has come so these are all advantage and definitely these are the two disadvantage and we overcome that but uh, it was initially a hurdle so that right was right excellent points being made by tejas and uh, now prabhakar uh, mr prabhakar rao you know coming to you for your uh, views on uh, you know your own experiences with cloud implementation as we have seen you know people we talking a lot about uh, aspects of vendor management scalability agility things that uh, you know some of the things which have gone in favor of cloud implementation others which haven't your views on this sir yeah so uh, well i think you know there's i mean right now the cloud as we see and you know if you look at some of the uh, reputed vendors okay there we can actually depend on the uh, the uh, scalability or you know the burst um, kind of uh, things that can be you know kind of addressed when there are applications which require sudden bandwidth requirements or sudden cpu or the memory requirements uh, but all cloud is also not the same story okay so i think you have to be choosy about the cloud vendors and uh, the models that we look at okay there can be some pitfalls here and there so uh, that is one thing having said that you know i think uh, first is the choice of the cloud vendor okay so what you want to put how do you want to put and uh, you know the uh, the location also makes a difference especially in the case of you know the when you are looking at the cloud for the disaster recovery applications okay so uh definitely when you look at the cloud you know again the location of the servers and all that should also be taken into consideration otherwise you know you may have a cloud vendor but the it's hosted probably in the same city or something so that is something that one has to take care of uh i mean these are all the finer prints that one has to look at and uh, uh that is one thing then of course the security part also how reliable and all that so again that goes back to the point you know in terms of making an appropriate choice for the cloud vendor and uh, there are a host of applications there are a host of you know the uh, server models or you know the processors and all that that you have to uh, you have to you have an option to select so one has to be careful about what they are selecting and the applications for which they are going to use it it shouldn't be, should not be overkill neither it should be undersized also okay so uh, well it's available on the platter one has to be very very choosy about it uh, what they are selecting they should not be a wrong choice and that's where you know uh, experienced hand can also help in terms of you know the right sizing of the things uh, and of course you know the other uh, ingredients of the security and other things have to be considered so that the configurations are done appropriately it should not happen that Uh, it should not be misunderstood or it should not be taken for granted that you know cloud is all secure kind of thing unless uh, unless we be kind of padded up properly otherwise then it can be left open to anyone also uh, so credentials are very weak so i mean the server is exposed again server or the data is also exposed so i think all those good hygiene factors definitely come into play uh, the choice of the vendor the hygiene factors 
and uh, the right sizing are important points to be taken note of right mr rao very valid points coming from you he spoke about uh, right sizing uh, cloud deployment uh, by which he meant that there shouldn't be an overkill as well as uh, you know under usage of the technology uh, very valid points he also touched on the security aspect of it now i think uh, you know we have had a wholesome uh, and very diverse perspectives from the technology leaders here at this point i would really want shri murugan to come in shri murugan you're there ab here ab here great 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 shri murugan so uh, murugan you have heard uh, uh, all these technology leaders speak about various uh, you know of course they had uh, uh, you know they spoke about various advantages as well as they also spoke about their pain points as far as cloud deployments is concerned particularly with reference to critical applications like sap your views on this sure thanks so uh, good evening everybody and uh, thanks so much for making it so yeah i heard a lot of uh, very interesting perspectives uh, from you know all the leaders present here right but you know i'm just taking down some notes and some of the uh, most common threads that came out right were uh, uh, you know covid and you know multiple uh, leaders spoke about the pandemic right and multiple leaders also spoke about uh, you know the challenges uh, faced right and again somehow or the other right we were also touching upon uh, how you tackle those challenges you know with respect to covid and you know how does this was impacted and how cloud really help right so uh, let me just start off by saying that you know today uh, you know uh, when it comes to uh, digital transformation right uh, so digital transformation can mean different things to different people right so to some people it could just mean move to digital uh, but in today's world when everybody is uh, digital all our systems are uh, digital and uh, a lot of us have also adopted uh, mission critical applications such as sap right the erp that runs all your uh, uh, business processes right uh, for us digital transformation would be you know how do we stay ahead of the joneses right Uh, how do we improve our top line how do we uh, improve our operating costs so uh, there would be two imperatives in front of us one would be to uh, of course upgrade our applications themselves make them cloud native and the other one of course is to uh, adopt uh, new fangled paradigms which promise to reduce our costs improve our top lines improve our top lines by, by, by becoming more sticky to our customers reducing our operating costs by having better visibility of data having insights that can help us improve our processes and so on so today the answer to both of these right uh, whether you like it or not lies on the cloud right so if you have uh, a mission critical uh, application like uh, sap and you're on an older version like ecc the imperative in front of you is to move to s4 s4 hana and of course sap gives you a pathway uh, to either you know move the application through something they offer called rice on to the cloud or you can you know talk to one of the hyperscalers such as google cloud and we will tell you how to put those applications uh, uh, including sap on the cloud right and of course these are from js and apprehensions and i think a lot of you brought them out so i'd like to address them right so the number one apprehension of course is security right how secure is my data how secure is my mission critical application like sap when i take it to the cloud uh so google cloud and all the other hyperscalers uh, we ensure that your data is more secure than gold in fort knox uh, all our data centers have uh, multiple levels of security we purpose build all of our uh, infrastructure and hardware we insert proprietary technology that will not even allow your uh, uh, hardware to boot up in case there's something malicious right and we're subject to uh, scores of security certifications so rest assured your data is secure second apprehension right um, what happens uh, and i think a lot of you brought this out uh, what's the purpose of going on to cloud if all my data centers are in the same city right so google cloud has uh, two seismic zones separated right not on the same seismic zone but on two different seismic zones uh, we have two sets of data centers one in mumbai one in delhi so you can have your applications uh, 
reside completely in India while having your DC in one region, say Mumbai, and you can have your DR in Delhi, right? So uh, this helps you to fall back. Uh, if something happens to Mumbai, you can fall back uh, onto the Delhi data center. And each one of these, since you're also talking about business continuity, each one of these data centers also has redundancy in the sense that they have three separate zones within each one of these regions. So you can have your subnet span across multiple zones and you can have a load balanced or multi-zone uh, you know, deployment, which gives you a resilience of a high availability of 99.99% right, from Google Cloud. So uh, another apprehension, I hope, you know, that I can allay that by telling you that, you know, uh, we as a cloud provider give CIOs such as yourself that peace of mind. Third, and I'll keep it short, uh, third apprehension is cost, right? Is cloud really uh, cheaper than on-prem, right? And the cost of moving from on-prem to cloud or the cost of moving from one cloud to another is sky high, right? So Google Cloud has ways of helping you save those costs as well. Right, you have a committed usage discount. Uh, so we basically, if you commit to using a certain uh, amount of our hardware uh, for a certain amount of time, we have associated discounts which are built in into our uh, billing automatically. We have algorithms running on top of our data centers that uh, look at your usage. And if you're using less than you had planned for, we will we will allow you at the click of a button to, as a self service, reduce your consumption of a particular uh, type of machine. And we will even uh, prompt you as to what lower machine uh, you can take up. What is the most common problem with uh, going with on-prem today? Hardware refreshes. Hardware refreshes are gone with the cloud, right? Because you don't have to plan for a three-year or five-year hardware refresh cycle. Google Cloud, for example, will keep upgrading your hardware to the latest process, a processor and the latest hardware in the backend. You only have to keep subscribing. So I hope to have allayed some of your concerns. I agree that, you know, that we have these challenges and today more and more companies and CIOs such as yourselves are looking at the cloud as a solution to mitigate some of the risks from COVID and uncertainties in business. But I hope that, you know, this helps answer some of the apprehensions that you have about the cloud today. So I'll pause here. Right. So Shri Murugan, uh, thanks for addressing the apprehensions and the challenges and the pain points that uh, technology leaders have faced or uh, envisage in the future. Thanks for doing that. Now, I would also want you to elaborate a little bit more on what you uh, touched upon uh, a little while back where you said how Google Cloud can help, you know, uh, really budget your applications, critical mission, critical applications like SAP on cloud. Uh, would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? Absolutely. So uh, let's talk about it in you know uh, uh, two different ways, right? So let's talk about business continuity, right? So how, how are you going to mitigate uh, uh, if, you know, there's a natural disaster or, you know, there's something which goes wrong in your uh, data centers? I think uh, one of the gentlemen who spoke earlier said, uh, you know, if their sales process is stalled, if they're not able to raise uh, invoices, that's going to uh, affect their business, right? If their mm -hmm. sales process stalls. So how is the cloud going to help them, right? Okay, so let me start with, you know, Google as a brand, right? So we all know Google as a brand. Uh, one of the most common things that all of us does is, uh, you know, to check whether our internet connections at home is working. What do we do? We go to www.google.com and check if uh, the search page opens, right? And if the search page opens, we heave a sigh of relief and say, yes, sab kuch chal raha, right? Uh, now, you know, we can go back to the internet and browse. I really agree with you. Yeah. So... <laughs> There are nine plus applications from Google which have over a billion users each, right? And we've come to associate a level of trust, a le level of, you know, security, a level of, you know, high availability that we associate, right, with these applications. Google Maps will take us to our destination, right? The AI and ML of Google Maps will take take us to our destination, right? We know that YouTube is available to us, any video at a click of a button. We know, we know that Google search is going to give us our results immediately, almost instantly, right? The same nuts and bolts, are now available to uh, our reputed customers, right? In the form of Google Cloud, right? So that's that's basically Google Cloud. The organization is a very fast-paced, uh, uh, growing organization, right? I also I already told you how we uh, help in, in in the context of a business, right? Or in the context of businesses, and in the context of giving peace of mind to CIOs, how we help uh, business continuity. Today, we are the only cloud provider who can co confidently say that, you know, we have true regions. 
in the sense that if something happens to one region, you can always follow or fail over to another region, which is on a separate seismic zone, which is not on floodplains and so on, right? So you're completely, uh, you know, secure from natural disasters, right? And we also have three zones in each one of our regions, which means that you can have native high availability. We have a feature called live migration, which ensures that you get 99.99% uptime, right? So what this basically means is that while your servers are running, right? Google Cloud, if you have, you know, something like a maintenance event or a patch or an upgrade, or even if the algorithms detect that the health of the systems is going down and therefore there's an imminent failure and therefore there could be a downtime, Google Cloud has a unique feature which will automatically copy your running server into another node, divert traffic to that node, and then, you know, uh, your business can just continue while you do your downtime activity. So you don't have to tell your uh, customers and your customers' customers that, you know, there's a downtime, your systems will be down for two hours and so on, right? This is called live migration. It's uniquely available from Google, right? So this is as far as, you know, business continuity is concerned, right? Let's talk about, you know, the other imperatives that, uh, you know, people have, right? So we spoke about digital transformation. So for some companies, digital transformation is to, you know, upgrade their applications and make them more cloud native. For somebody, it would be, you know, let's containerize our applications, right? Uh, let's, you know, get an ESB, right? Which can help all applications talk to each other. Let's create a data lake, right? So all of these are, you know, new toys, new shiny toys that all of us in the IT industry like to play with. All of a sudden COVID happens, right? And we don't know what, uh, what to do, right? Now, COVID was like demonetization. Demonetization created a boost, a boost in the uh, adoption of digital payments, right? Similarly, COVID was a boon for cloud <clears throat> because all of a sudden, everybody had to you know, change the way they were doing business. Everybody had to be more accessible from anywhere and everywhere. People had to work from home. So all of a sudden, cloud was the answer to everything, right? So... Uh, so let, let me, you know, kind of tackle that a little different way and very quickly, right? Let me, you know, kind of summarize. So digital transformation means different things to different people, right? So the traditional ways in which you are, you know, probably uh, looking at your demand forecasting, they're all gone out of the window because today you need, uh, you know, external factors, you need trend data, you need to be able to predict that something like a COVID is going to happen and because of which, you know, an auto ancillary manufacturer is able to forecast his demand better being able to focus that the demand for cars is going to reduce because people are not going to commute anymore to office because they're going to work from home. So there's this huge chain of causality. And companies like Google, which are data companies at the heart of it, right? We capture data at every touch point in all our uh, customer applications. So we are uniquely positioned today to help organizations mitigate the risks from something like a COVID, right? So in addition to, you know, adopting big data, creating a data lake and having analytics and so on, Google can actually help customers shape their demand in a much better way. So for me, that is digital transformation, right? Being able to truly, you know, uh, anticipate these changes in business and being able to react to them, that is digital transformation. And that is where cloud really plays its part today, right? So I'll pause here again so that... Uh, you can give an opportunity to everybody else as well. <laughs> so, Shri, I think you have given a brilliant uh, analogy, uh, which I particularly liked on how, you know, COVID has been an accelerator for uh, not only for digital transformation, but also for cloud in general for enterprises across the world. Of course, uh, you know, the past two years have seen unprecedented circumstances. There's no doubt about it. And it has forced uh, businesses and enterprises to kind of rethink their entire strategy as uh, you know as far as the uh, taking the digital route is concerned you know very interesting points uh, made by uh, shri uh, i really appreciate you you know very brilliant uh, and very insightful remarks on how the entire world has changed you know particularly in the way we work in the post pandemic era now really uh, going to abdul for his views on you know, Abdul, you have been uh, working with customers uh, across the board as far as uh, uh, digital transformation is concerned, as far as uh, cloud deployment is concerned. How has your experience been, uh, you know, particularly vis-a-vis -vis Brio's uh, perspective of working with your customers uh, as far as SAP workloads on Google Cloud is concerned? 
Thank you. Thanks for the question. And uh, it was uh, very wonderful uh, to listen to all the leaders here. And uh, particularly, challenges was like the most interesting part for us because, uh, you know, it's really people uh, talk this transparently. Uh, you know about challenges uh, they face in adopting cloud. So yeah, like uh, uh, as a cloud service provider and a decade uh, old partner with Google, uh, we were the uh, first uh, like you know partners to uh, you know have a partnership with Google Cloud in India. So this was around like 2008, 2009. So so uh, uh, in this like 14 years of journey with Google. Uh, cloud, particularly, we had opportunity to, to work with thousands of customers and uh, you know thousands of customers, uh, particularly on the SAP workloads. Like you know, so uh, one of the largest implementation is around like uh, two lakh fifty thousand users. Where we work with on with uh, Google team. So uh, we work with very small to very large customers and migrate to their SAP workload. So a uh, couple of learnings which we see uh, any organization uh, trying to move particularly SAP workloads like uh, the first question is hey, can I move to cloud? Right. So so that is one key question. So a lot of efforts which go on like uh, because uh, it's it's very important by like, we envision the whole journey and see that uh, uh, you know we're not just considering SAP because we are also considering all the applications which are tied up in this. So, so it's, it's super important uh, that a considerable amount of time is spent in doing the assessment uh, what can be moved, what cannot be moved. And if it cannot be moved, how, how it can be handled. So there could be a number of implications in that. It could be technical, it could be compliance. Like, there are so many things which affects the whole migration. Right? So uh, these are some of the concerns which people have. And then, uh, you know, uh, how difficult is the migration? So once we figure out, uh, you know, how uh, you will be able to move them. The most important thing is uh, charting down the whole uh, migration roadmap, defining the phases, what goes for us, what goes next, what goes next. So, so these are some of the things which are related to migration. And uh, I think like the third thing here is like how much it costs, like you know, for any organization uh, when they're moving to cloud. So it's, it's it's very important that not only the uh, infra cost, network cost, and most importantly, change management. Uh, like you know, a couple of leaders were talking about change management. How important is that? So looking into all those aspects, because uh, for us, like working with you know thousands of customers, what we understand today is uh, cost is not about financial cost. Cost is about uh, you know, uh, and and. Uh, as uh, Sri Gurdan was also saying, what digital transformation to an organization is it means, uh, does it mean like you want to deliver faster services, or does it mean like uh, you want to roll out new features, or does it mean like you want to be super fast, agile to respond to situations, uh, any situation, be it an opportunity, be it a challenge. So, uh, different organizations have so, so how, how can we meet those things, right? So all these consider costs, it's not just the financial cost, uh, which is important. So so this has to be uh, taken care of. And uh, so uh, what we feel is uh, when we are looking into this whole problem, it's not about today, it's all about future, right? So definitely we have to take the opportunity of today to plan for tomorrow. That, that is super important for any organization. It, it doesn't uh, like you know matter like you're just planning for six months and after six months the whole thing has changed. Change and things are changing so rapidly. So, so as a business, how how critical it is for us to see that we adopt these fast changes, right? And of course, the last aspect is once you move uh, onto the cloud, how do you optimize? 
and optimize is not just cost optimizing is like uh, i just want to take an analogy of how you keep your money in bank right the moment you keep your money in bank uh, not only you get security but the host of services are available for you like you can do uh, you know uh, electronic transfers ubis there's so many things which you are, you will be able to do once you have your money in the bank so same thing applies to the customers who are moving their sap workflow so once you move your sap workflow to the cloud i think then you know uh, you will be able to leave this data you will be able to leave this dimn so optimization for us is not just about reducing cost it is how we can give you more dollars back for the amount you're spending so that is what is more critical so so i just want to conclude with that so these, these are like few learnings which i wanted to share like what we have learned working with this customer so that's really interesting abdul you know what you just spoke about you know various facets and aspects of cloud deployment you know in particular reference to uh, mission critical applications now how can brio help organizations bridge this gap between business needs and the so called new normal so mobile like thanks and that's a very important question like uh, as couple of things which came into this discussion i just want to summarize those points like a uh, few people talked about experience right so having the right experience like because when you are planning your cloud migration it's all about the journey so you need uh, people who can really contemplate the future and make the right decisions and i think one important thing which also came in like cloud is like a platter right so we also like you know life is full of choices and uh, you are what you choose right so so i think making the right choice is the most important thing for uh, uh, you know uh, in any aspect so that is where we help people we understand today's requirement we understand uh, tomorrow's requirement uh, the overall vision and see how we can propose a solution which is like scalable which is you know which can really benefit all so as a expert as a cloud service provider uh, you know we feel like uh, helping our customers make the right choices and helping uh, make their it a business differentiator uh, with full of joy and easiness is our goal basically so technology is as good as people are talking here so there's no point having a great technology where people are not using it so it does make so sure so these are some of the fundamental principles which drive uh Brio as an organization so uh and uh because of the other panelists i just want to cut short this so uh, these are like two three important things which we uh, bring into the day thanks abdul for your uh, very insightful inputs now before we wrap up i would really want to you know go back to the panelists on you know they are all uh, you know extreme you know they are all technologists and uh, experts of this field so starting with shriram shriram how do you see the technology landscape evolving uh, you know in the coming years so interesting question so i think a lot of new uh, things that were this typically buzzwords just a few years back has become started becoming the norm right like for example ai ml is something that you hear in every single new technology that we're talking about and uh, right now things that are buzzwords like metaverse or uh, you know web3 blockchain and these kind of things are slowly gaining some level of uh, business traction so i feel uh, this kind of a major event like a pandemic has really shifted in terms of uh, companies adopting these new technologies more uh, so there might be certain very specific use cases that we uh, that each company tries out which we do ourselves and you see success there and you experiment more and and you see business value immediately i think that kind of experimental mode with newer technologies is what i see as a bigger shift that has happened in the last few years and it will continue to grow uh, more and more very interesting very interesting points coming from shiram they just your views 
so definitely lots of things going digitally and uh, cloud rpa ml there will be a good importance given to the governance that how you will see that there is no cyber attacks no mis uh, management of any of the services although there will be sla with the cloud players but uh, internal governance is always required because you cannot pass your governance to any third party that is a security lies within yourself so that will be given a more importance if you see the regulatory side also like on the banking rbi sebi they are very much strict on the like every bank is now uh, on the cloud and they have a mobile app but uh, they are very much strict on the cyber laws and the security so i think this will be equally playing a very parallel role with the technology going right excellent point made by tejas that uh, security and compliance will uh, continue to play a uh, very critical roles particularly in data sensitive industries like the bfsi banking financial healthcare for example a very interesting point coming from tejas now i would really request panelists uh, you know that uh, uh, we see that uh, both the representatives from rio technologies as well as shri are here in case you have any doubts queries questions uh, that you uh, related to this uh, uh, to this domain of discussion uh, please feel free to raise them at this juncture or uh, if there aren't any uh, queries questions remaining i think we have had uh, a wonderful uh, discussion today we are on, already on the top of the hour uh, almost and uh, it's been a wonderfully insightful talk and uh, i really loved the perspectives which have been uh, put forward by the technology leaders who attended this discussion and uh, thanks a lot for making time for all this uh, however in the interest of time so that uh, we really stick to our schedule uh, i think uh, you know we can call it a wrap uh, and uh, in case uh, you would uh, want to get in touch with the representatives here feel free to do that uh, alternatively you could also get in touch with us uh, i for one uh, have had uh, a lovely lovely uh, experience moderating this session where we really delved into uh, you know the pros and the cons of cloud deployment and how uh, you know as one panelist or you know particularly mr rao put it how do you really uh, decide the right fit for yourself how do you make cloud deployment absolutely optimized to your own requirements i think that is the uh, need of the hour as far as enterprises and businesses are concerned today thank you gentlemen for joining us today it's been lovely lovely interacting with all of you